Hi, everyone. How are you, Ed? Yeah, good, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Very well. Good, good. Hi, hi, Nathan. It's Leighton. Hi, Leighton. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I haven't got my camera on, though. No, it's perfectly fine. Yeah, it's, it's all right. I'm, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be um, asking everyone to mute themselves in five minutes, not because I don't like your voices, just because uh, <laughs> we've got Lisa to speak. But, um, how, how's everyone's days going? All, all good? Um, very busy. <laughs> very busy. Yeah, last day before lockdown as well, right? It's uh, <laughs> hectic. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Um, we've got a session book next week now, haven't we? Yes, yes, we do. Um, yep. Monday, yeah, accepted that. Um, so, yeah, thank you for doing that as well, Leighton. I uh, really appreciate it. No, no problem. Um, Looking forward to it. I, um, I forwarded that on to Vic as well, if that's okay. Yeah, well. yeah, absolutely fine. Absolutely okay. fine. Awesome, awesome. All right, I'm just going to mute. No worries. How's everyone else doing? Good. All good? Thanks. Good. Good to hear. Good to see everyone here as well. Thank you all for thank you all for coming. What we'll do, everyone, we'll um we'll start the event in around three minutes. Just let people kind of come in, um, say hello, and then uh, yeah, Lisa Lisa will start the event. Hi, oh, Will. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing very well, thank you. Very well. You're good. It's a nice setup there. <laughs> Thanks. Spare room. So all yeah. Good. Oh, decent. Would have, would have mind that as the main one. Yeah. <laughs> Just waiting for a few people to to come through and we get started. Hi, Ian. How are you? I'm good, thanks. I'm just getting used to this interface. So. <laughs> there's, a, there's a button you have to press to talk. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's my it's my first. Um, yeah, it's my first Zoom uh, event as well. So, um, yeah, if, if we run with with no technical difficulties, that's a win already. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's worked now. Just you have to scroll across to find and see people and then there's a big ah. button speak done well it says done speaking great grammar um <laughs> which you press to mute yourself again so yeah no it's, it's all right so that's why we're just getting right. used to it okay all good all good oh that's that's all we can do try and learn i'm sure we're going to be needing this a lot more given the uh, context of the event <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hi, Sarah. How are you? Hi, Nathan. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you perfectly fine. All good. All good. good. Nice to see you. How has your day been? Uh, very hectic. Just came off a stakeholder meeting. <laughs> oh, God. Straight on to another, another meeting. Yeah. <laughs> That's what you. we do this job for though, right? <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Find out a lot more about that soon. <laughs> yeah. How are you, Mick? Nice to see you. Yeah, good. Thanks, Nathan. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly fine. Thank you. Good. good. All, all good. All good. It seems like we've got quite quite a few people in uh, first five minutes, which is decent. No, no one's uh, past meetings have overrun or anything, which is always good to see. So... Yeah, guys and girls, it's uh, it's like five past five now. Um, so I think uh, now is a good time to to start the event. Um, anyone else who uh, you know wants to be admitted, I'll um, I'll do that throughout. Um, but uh, but yeah, what 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 I'll do now is is really um, hand it over to Lisa. Of course, we've got we've got Lisa speaking at the event. So um, 
yeah, um, I, I think the best way to, to go about this is everyone keeps their um, mic on mute. That'll be really helpful throughout. And then we've got a Q&A session um, at the end. But by all means, feel free to, to put something in the chat or um, feel free to, to maybe unmute your mic at the end of like a, a PowerPoint slide. Um, if you have any um, questions, uh, you, you know, throughout the presentation, that's absolutely fine as well. Uh, we're all here just to just try and support each other and um, yeah, learn off each other. And I'm sure some of you will have questions that other uh, people want answering as well. So, so don't be shy about asking any questions at all. Anything's welcome. I'm sure, sure Lisa will echo that. Of course. Awesome. Well, that seems like we, we've got uh, one more person in the lobby. So um, what I'm going to do now, everyone, is, uh, is share the screen and um, yeah, we will get straight to this. Uh, so I will pass this over to Lisa, if you just bear with me. Can everyone see my screen? Yep. Awesome. I don't know if you want to do this on presentation. No, no. Yep. Does that work for everyone? Yeah. Okay. okay. Awesome. So, um, guys, you are going to, to see the... Um, yeah, a small, a small box here, but of course that, that's just a Zoom. So um, yeah, guys, welcome to the event. Um, uh, of course, starting a BRM position in lockdown, is it possible? Of course, it's a very timely event given, given the recent news and, you know, going into lockdown tomorrow. Um, I am, um, yeah, go, going to ha hand over to Lisa. We're, we're very lucky to have Lisa today. Uh, she's recently started a role as an IT, a senior IT business partner at uh, MS Amlin. And she uh, will tell you herself, and, and I won't steal, steal the show from her, but she uh, hasn't met any of her colleagues yet. And uh, yeah, there's no, no better person to run this event because she's experienced it firsthand and uh, is still doing her role very, very effectively and very successfully. Um, so Lisa, if, you, if you'd like to introduce yourself, that, that'd be really helpful. Yeah. So um, hi, everybody. It's nice to meet you all virtually, of course. Um, I'm Lisa Garner, as Nathan said. And um, I actually did start my, my new, well, I say new role at um, MS Amlin. It's now, I started a week into lockdown. So it was right at the very end of March. So I've actually been there for about seven months. Um, and having not met a single person is a very odd position to be in, I have to say. Um, but just a bit of background on me. I don't know if you've got a slide to move to, Nathan. I don't want to go out of sync. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, so, um, so a bit about my background. So I actually started my career when I was a baby, when I was 18 at JP Morgan um, in uh, very various areas, but predominantly futures and options. And I worked with them for 14 years. Um, I worked for them in, for seven years in London and then they kindly moved me to Sydney um, and I worked with them for another seven years there. Um, by the time I left, I was the VP looking after all of the um, um, reconciliation for the global trading. Um, so it's quite a quite a wide role, very high pressure, long, 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 long hours. Um, and then uh, we had the crash following Lehman's um, going bust. And um, as with lots of banks, we had to lose quite a lot of people. So I decided to put my hand up to take redundancy. I thought 14 years was long enough in any um, investment bank, to be honest with you. Um, and I, um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do next, but I had a bit of project management um, experience from those 14 years as well. So I actually uh, took a role in a media company um, as a temp project manager for three months, just because I just wanted to go into anything for banking. And it was quite a big media company. It's called Fairfax Media and the main competitor to news back then. Um, so I went in there and, uh, and did a bit of project management work for them and uh, quickly spotted that they had no PMO. They just had lots and lots of uh, contract PMs dotted all over the place doing things very differently, which was confusing the business quite a lot. Um, because no one was following any standardised processes at all. So I actually suggested that they should get a PMO in place and actually also get some more permanent um, project management skills. Um, so I helped them set that up and they sort of obviously they took me on permanently to do that. Um, so I helped them do that for about a year. They asked me if I wanted to run the PMO and I decided that that wasn't really what I wanted to do. And they asked me again, well, what do you want to do? And I said, I'm still not sure. But um, so I, I was by that point, um, uh, 
being a programme director for some of their biggest programmes. And then they hired a new CTO who came in. And at that point, they had six business units with technology teams within each business unit, um, which isn't the most effective way to run a business, as you can imagine, especially of that size. And so the CTO came in and one of the first thing he did was centralise the tech team. Um, and as a result of doing that, he put the business partner roles in place. So at the, at initially he had one BP per business unit. To be honest, at first, when I saw the jobs go up, um, I wasn't particularly interested because he actually named them technology director roles because um, it was the only way that the business would actually take the role seriously. And he knew that uh, these roles would need to be operating at quite a senior level and technology director to me sounded like somebody who you know would have to be deeply technical um, which is clearly not where my um, my pathway had not been um, through an IT or very technical areas at all so he eventually came to me and sort of said to me I've heard about you um, I've seen you know some of the, the work you've done in delivery and obviously as a project manager one of the biggest bonuses is that I'd got to know a lot of different people in that business so I had a really good uh, uh, footprint in if I can ask anyone who's not to go on mute that'd be fantastic thank you um yeah so he approached me and just asked me if I'd give the give the give the role a go um he he basically was working with the editorial team and he said, if you've worked with bankers and um, brokers for your whole life, then you'll be able to deal with this mob because they're, they're the same breed. So, um, so yeah, so I, I wasn't sure, but he asked me if I'd give it a try. He said, if you, you give it three months, if you don't like it or if I don't like you, we'll find something else for you to do. So um, I literally jumped in the deep end with no armbands. Um, it was a new role, so I had nobody to ask, how do I do this job? Um, he was very hands off as a manager, which in general I like, but obviously at that point was a bit, you know, scary. Um, he just sort of said, I'm going to give you three things I need you to do every month and I, you can just do them how you need to. So um, there was a lot of freedom um, and self-management. But yeah, I definitely think it's the scariest, most scared I've ever been taking off on a role as I really had no guidance. But I jumped in feet first and, um, and uh, obviously... Um, did seem to do the right thing because three months later I was enjoying it and he was happy with what I was doing. Um, and then I worked there for another four years. Um, and by the time I left, I'd actually taken on four out of the six business units. So I was looking after all of them. Um, then I left and came back to London. So I worked for Direct Line for three years, doing the business partner role there. Um, and then joined MS Amelin, as I said, in March, in both, uh, for both Direct Line and MS Amelin. Um, it was a brand new role um, so in both cases I've had to go in and set the role up from scratch and um, work with the other business partners to set that department up from um, from the beginning which I actually quite like um, so um, because then you, you know I like I sort of like doing things my way a little bit so I think it would be better for me to do it that way than try and pick up from someone else but um, so yes yeah, so that's where I am now um, why do I like it still after eight years um, it's a very sociable role, uh, obviously a little bit less sociable in the last eight months than it might have usually been, but um, you know, you get to meet lots and lots of different people. It no day is ever the same. The challenges are always different, um, but mainly because I really feel like I can really make a difference. Um, you know, you've got that big picture view and you can really spot where things are just aren't working, which is a little bit more difficult for people in the weeds to suss out. Um, and, uh, and and help to make things run more effectively. So that's why I like it. Um, moving forward. Um, you, is there anything I missed there, Nathan? No, no, not at all, Lisa. I think one thing I should just add, um, uh, I'm not sure why my computer just uh, skipped it, but in the itinerary, of course. So um, I'll quickly run over this just so you guys have some, some context of the structure of the event uh, and give Lisa a small break um, uh, speaking before she, she speaks for, for a little bit. <laughs> um, so so we've got um, what, why BRM works best in person, right? So that's setting the tone and understanding the theory and almost the myth behind um, why we believe this role does work best 
exist in person. And although it does, Lisa will show you definitely how to adapt to that throughout. Um, we'll then get an insight into Lisa's lockdown um, journey as well. So, um, you, you know, the experience she had personally and the experience that you guys may, may be going through right now um, or, or have gone through. Um, and then we, we take a look at the first month as well. And that's not a typo, by the way, guys. That's uh, 60 days is uh, because things are going to take twice as long in this environment. Um, then we're going to look at how to make uh, the role work importantly of course that's why a lot of you are here um, and and then we're going to take a look at you know um, the, the conclusion and, and, and almost the main points of how BRM is going to work moving forward and then we have a, uh, a Q&A session as I mentioned at the start where anyone can ask um, any sorts of questions and, and I'm sure Lisa and I will uh, will come up with the answers but apologies everyone for missing that I'm not sure what uh, what went on but uh, I'll hand it back over to Lisa to uh, explain why BRM works best in person. Okay so so um, I think clearly um, any in um, any building any relationship in life, um, you know, we do that face to face. We, we we get so much feedback from people, not just by what they say, but their body language. Um, you know, just the energy that you get in a room. If you're, if you're present, this is really difficult presenting like this because you literally have no feedback. Um, whereas when you when you're in a room, you really know if people are falling asleep. Um, or yawning or if they're smiling at you and they're enjoying it so you know exactly the same way building relationships is much easier face to face um, I was definitely one of those people who just thought there is just no way that this role can be done remotely um, I've got friends who um, have jobs where you know they literally travel the world with a laptop and I was always very jealous of them um, but I thought well you know the role I've chosen to do uh, as my career there's no way I would ever be able to do that. I'm always going to have to be in the office. I'm always going to have to be, um, you know, predominantly in the office. I have worked a day from home in the past, but um, particularly at the beginning of um, building the relationships, I've always had, I've always done it face to face, spent a lot of face time with people. So I was definitely one of these people that was like, no, nope, definitely can't be done at all. How, however, obviously, um, I was forced to, <laughs> to reassess that assumption. And actually now I think, you know, I can comfortably say that although it has been a lot more difficult in some ways, um, there, this is a role that now can be done fully remotely, um, you know, and in, in the future, if I ever did want to, once, you know, once we can actually get on a plane, if I want to go off to Italy for a month and do my job from there, then I actually really feel that I can do comfortably do that now. So it's actually quite nice because it's opened up opportunities. However, obviously, there is difficulties around that. Um, you have much more intense WebEx meetings. I'm sure everyone's already experienced that. Um, they are way more draining than being a meet in a meeting room. I actually read an article about this and it's because you have to be so focused on the screen. Screens are draining anyway. Um, and you're missing those, um, you know, those, um, nonverbal signals that you get, um, in when you usually have people face to face. Um, you lose a lot of information because you're not passing people in the office, you know, you're not having those chit chats in the lift, you're not um, meeting people in the kitchen and, and you do need to find it elsewhere. It's, you know, it, you can find that information, but you have to sort of, you don't necessarily know what you don't know. So you have to just be a lot more inquisitive and curious. Um, however, the pluses, so for me, one of the big pluses was when I Generally, when you go to an office for the first day, maybe you'll be taken around and you'll meet 20 people for like three minutes, if you're lucky. Um, when I did this from home, obviously, I didn't have that. I just was given a list of names to reach out to. And that meant that I then booked half an hour meetings in with those individuals. So rather than getting that very quick three minutes, oh, you know, I'm Tom and I'm the head of underwriting and that's all you get. I actually got... 30 minutes of much more detailed information. I could really piece together where they sat in the organization, exactly what they did every day. I took that as an opportunity to understand what they did and didn't like about IT um, and got way more feedback than I would have normally. It took me a lot longer to meet everybody, but the, um, the level of detail I got from them was fantastic. So, you know, it does, there, are, there are pluses around this as well. But you just, you have to be very, you do have to adapt. You need to be very flexible. And I think you need to manage your own expectations as well. I remember when I, when I was about maybe four weeks, six weeks in, and I was really panicking because I didn't feel like I was where I should be. And when I say should be, 
that's that was my own assessment of where I should be nobody was actually giving me any negative feedback um, and it was just because it just you know it took me a lot long, longer to to find out information and to meet people um, so I had to actually realize that I was the only one putting pressure on myself and sort of forgive myself and remove those expectations um, and just understand that you know this is a different environment um, and therefore things are going to be working a lot the way I work would have to be different and so my expectations would have to be different um, so yeah that's um absolutely some some really good points there lisa um and i think it definitely shows that you know it's a time where where people do need to adapt and and you know it's really debunking that myth that as you had had that preconception yourself right um you know where, where this role was just impossible there's no way you could grab your laptop and then go away but um clearly you're you're, you're going to show how it can be done as well yeah. so well, on to you so yeah, so my experience, and obviously as I mentioned, um, I joined literally uh, the week after the office had shut. Um, in fact, actually leading up to my first day, I had, uh, it was a lot of anxiety because I was a bit like, are they still going to hire me? Am I still going to start on that day? Is the job going to change? Is it going to go away? What's going to happen? Um, and they were obviously mixed in with all the other uncertainty around the fact that, you know, COVID was new and this whole lockdown situation was, was quite, um, well, was very new for all of us to try and experience. Um, then obviously, you know, coupled with exactly what we just mentioned before, this expectation I had that my role was just impossible um, without being done face to face. So, you know, I was sitting there thinking, how am I going to do this? Um, and also for me, so obviously I've been a business partner now for eight years. So the actual role itself is sort of in my DNA almost. Um, and the reason I moved to different, you know, I, I think if you're a good business partner, you're probably only going to be around in a business for two to three years. If you're very good, you almost do yourself out of a job. So for me, the way that I keep my career interesting is to go to different businesses or to, do, to go and support different business units in businesses. So that I actually have something to learn. So I joined Amos Samlin because, um, you know, the, the, uh, the Lloyd's market is quite something that I haven't experienced before or worked in. And I was really excited to go into that. That was, that was going to be my challenge. And the way I learn usually is I would go and plonk myself down next to an underwriter, for example, and say, let me watch what you do for two hours. Um, I can't do that from here. Um, <laughs> um, and I don't think many people would really want me in their dining room or their studies. Um, but <laughs> even if they did, you know, that, so that's been a massive challenge for me because um, learning a business without really being able to do the side of desk learning has been a, a big challenge. And if anything, that's been the most difficult part of it for me. Um, so, yeah, I had a lot of anxiety. Obviously, I think um, even with hiring managers and I've been speaking to them internally within our company as well that there needs to be way more communication than there used to be and um, by the recruiter or the hiring manager with the with people joining remotely because um, you just they don't just turn up to the office and get met by someone and be given a, a, a building pass and get sit down at your desk and show someone shows you how to log in you've got to do it all yourself so if you're not receiving that sort of level of interaction beforehand and you've got those concerns, then obviously I think we, we know it's up to us to reach out to, to the, the recruiter or the hiring manager to find out exactly what's going to happen on that 9am on day one, um, because it, it's, it's completely different. But yeah, that, it was, um, it was uh, quite an anxious time for sure. I bet. A very, uh, yeah, very worrying, uncertain time, definitely, Lisa. Well done for getting through it. <laughs> Back into another one now. <laughs> I'm prepared for this one. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the difference. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, the first 30 days, and as, as Nathan said, I said we need to extend it out to 60 days because I tr truly think that at the beginning, everything does take twice as long. As I've mentioned, all of those one-to-ones, um, you're spending way more time with people. Um, so it's it's I, I personally think it's much more valuable time and you get more information but obviously they they stretch out um I think I had 80 introductions in the first six weeks um my initial mistake was to have too many in one day whatever you do don't do five back-to-back -back half an hour introductions with people you'll be absolutely exhausted and then you'll forget who you've met and what they've told you um so make sure you give yourself some breaks um but you know um 
I think you need to also understand whether this is a brand new position. So are you taking over from someone else? Will you, will you need that handover? Um, or will you be similar to my position where you're literally starting from a blank page um, and you need to just basically be incredibly self-sufficient and self-starting in that situation? Um, you, I think also be aware, you're probably not gonna get the same onboarding experience that you're used to. Um, in previous companies, you know, you might go and have a day where you have presentations all day from HR and all the different business units. That's probably not going to happen. Some businesses maybe have got their act together and are doing virtual onboarding. But I think, you know, it's still something that um, in most cases, companies are still trying to get their heads around. How do they how do we really do this? Because I think to begin with, if I'm honest, nobody really expected it to be going on for this long. And it's only really now, I'd say in the last two months, where companies are starting to realise that this uh, onboarding from home is probably going to be around for a lot, lot longer. Even if it's in fits and starts, we could be doing this for another six months to a year, right? So I think they're starting to take the fact that they're going to have to do more official onboarding more seriously. Um, but if you're not getting that, you have to go out and find out the information yourself. Um, so for me, it's, it's really key um, that every time you speak to somebody, you then ask them, them, who else you need to speak to. So you just continue to get that list of ne the, the network that you need to um, reach out to. Um, and you don't want to keep having to go back to your boss all the time to say, well, who do I talk to next? So every single person I spoke to, I asked who else I needed to go to and, you know, got this sort of um, worked my way down the org chart, I suppose. Um, the other thing I did is when I was having all this time, these extra long meetings to, to introduce myself, um, I specifically focused on asking them exactly what was working for them from an IT perspective and what, um, and what wasn't. So I asked, asked them for the top three things that bugged them and then just asked if, if there was any positive feedback as well. Um, and then I took those actions and all of that feedback and I came out with sort of like 10 10 things that we could do to improve things and then took the top three or the easiest three in some cases um, and made it my purpose really to get those things turned around as soon as possible. Um, my brand is very much somebody who gets stuff done um, and that's always how I sell myself an interview as well. I'm a doer. Um, I like looking for things that don't work and I like fixing them. So that was perfect for me to really back up my brand also and make myself make a name for myself as someone who does get things done. And if people do approach me and involve me, that there will be action taken. Um, and then they remember who you are, because obviously not being literally visible, um, you're easily forgotten. And, and one of the other challenges is if you, you might have that 30 minute meeting with someone, and normally in an office environment, you might walk past them, they walk past their desk, see them in the lift and just say hello a few times and embed who you are visually <laughs> even, um, whereas you can't do that um, when you're um, remote. And you also can't really just be sticking in five minute catch ups with them just so they remember who you are. So you have to sort of think about how you do that around the edges um, and make sure that, you know, when you do fix these things or whatever you decide to do to make an impact, um, that you actually communicate that back out as well. Um, and I think the other thing around the first 60 days is be prepared to feel really overwhelmed and a bit lost. Um, it took me at least two months, maybe three really, for that light bulb moment to click where everything made sense. Um, everything, I had to learn everything via PowerPoint presentations, which is my most hated way of learning. I'd rather sit down and, you know, as I've said, uh, watch someone and watch how they work or be in the project meetings where things are discussed and you might might not always get that option so I had to accept that I had to do a hell of a lot of reading um, uh, and then it took a very long time for some of that to really go in you know for the first month a lot of it didn't make any sense at all so I think it's just to keep reminding yourself that it, it's normal to feel quite overwhelmed and it's difficult because you've got no one to bounce off you've got no one sitting next to you to ask what that acronym means um, and the other thing I did is so that I didn't harass people constantly which at the first week was literally my boss and her PA 
um, everything I was reading and going through, I'd write a list of questions and then I'd email that whole list of questions at the end of the day so that she could respond. And obviously, as I got to know more people, I could utilise other people as well. Um, because, yeah, you just literally, you know, you don't have anyone just to sort of go, what does PRO mean in this, in this company? Um, so, yeah, so I think that really summarises the first two months and, and the approach I took around trying to make, make, embed myself and be effective. Sure. For, thank you for that, Lisa. I think you mentioned a really good point there about, um, you, you know, uh, using your initiative to find out who else you need to speak to. And it kind of touches back on your um, last point there. You know, uh, people, ju just as um, all of you guys will be uh, on this call now, you're, you're going to be very, very busy and, and diaries, as you all well know, fill up very quickly um, when we're working remotely. And, and like Lisa alluded to there, you can't put five minutes in, five minutes there. Um, so, so it's really key to, to use your initiative and I think uh, I think planning is absolutely crucial here and, and, and going into uh, calls with, with a real goal and structure and actually understanding what you want from it and that way you won't be you know chasing your tail and and chasing every every other new person in the business um, I, I think that's a really good point Lisa Thanks. Um, yeah so I think how, how else I made it work so as I've mentioned you have to really be a self-starter you can't wait to be told what to do um, you really need to be reaching out to as we you know as soon as you make those connections find out what, what the other connections you can you can access you know get all charts find out who everyone is um, contact them I think you need to to be a leader as well um, I'm part of the leadership team so it's really key that I'm visible as much as possible from an IT team perspective as well um, and you know obviously facing off to the business uh, one of my key, you know, they're my key priority, but it's very key for me to make sure that I'm facing back into the IT team as well and communicate with them just as much as I can commun communicate with the business. And um, so they're, they're aware of what, what, what's going on and why. Um, I think during, you know, particularly during a lockdown, uh, for me, it's super key to be conscious of mental health. I'm a mental health first aider as well. So, you know, it's, um, it's a bang I'm always drum a, a drum I'm always banging um so you know for me I need to make sure that I take regular breaks during the day I'm sure all of you have heard lots of this before but it's it's easy to forget and before you know it you've sat down at your laptop at half seven in the morning and then you know it's half seven at night and you're like you know your eyes are glazed and you're exhausted and you haven't eaten anything and particularly when you start a new job um, you could probably work for 24 hours a day, seven days a week for six months when you're, particularly when you're new and still not catch up with everything. In fact, I don't think that ever goes away, to be honest, but <laughs> that's even more important um, that you structure your day. And I book an hour and a half out in the middle of my day, every single day in my diary to go for a run, go for a walk, eat something and catch up on email so that, you know, it's not as I'm sure most of you back to back meetings, it just stacks up. So I actually have that in my diary and unless it is someone more important than me, that doesn't move. Um, um, and for me, you know, there's other tips and tricks. So uh, some of my colleagues gave me this one, which I quite like, unless it's pouring down with rain. But before I start work, I literally just walk around the block um, as if it's my commute. Um, and it helps to move me from a, I'm at home and this is my relaxing environment to I'm about to work and I've got my business brain on. Because for me, the office has always been, you know, where I switch on. And then when I get home, I switch off. And it actually took me a really long time, actually, to get my business brain to work um, when I got my new job. Because I'd had a few months off from my last role. So being at home was very, you know, where I chilled out. And, you know, I'm also working in my dining room, which is, you know, part of my lounge area. So um, I had to come up with ways to, to get my business brain to click on. And then you also need just as importantly to click it off at the end of the day as well. Um, and yeah, I think for me, exercise is my, is my sanity, um, going for a run or something like that. Everyone will have their different, their different approaches, but you know, it's, um, you need to really setting boundaries when you're working at home, um, is really important. Otherwise you'll, you'll burn out basically. 
Absolutely, Lisa. And I'd like to echo what you said a, a, about the mental health side of things. Um, yeah, you know, by, by no means is that the only thing we're focusing on here, but it's it's absolutely crucial, um, you know, to <laughs> to just your general well-being. You know, we're we're not designed to to sit in four walls. <laughs> um, so, to, like Lisa's point about walking around the block just to just to kind of um, replicate the commute, that that's really good because um, I'm sorry if any of you have had a, an 8:30 a.m. call with me, but I'd most likely roll down. <laughs> Of bed 15 minutes <laughs> 15 minutes ago and uh yeah it, it's very good to to reset your brain and just just to get it ready for the day so um yeah anything to take your mind off of work you, you don't want to be working you know 12 hours with, without eating and, and drying up that way definitely just trying to uh to move the sides lisa all right <laughs> so, told you we, we, we would have some technical <laughs> issues <laughs> there we go there we go Yep, so I think uh, in conclusion, I think my, my sort of the top five things that I'd say had to, to, to work from home from su successfully, um, particularly, you know, as a new, as a, in a new role, is accept that the role is different. The job description might not have changed, but the way that you need to enact it is completely different. So you need to be really adaptable and flexible. Um, you need to be proactive and be that self-starter. Um, I think being visible, which is really the hard one, right? Because we're all behind screens and I'm in my dining room. Um, try and make yourself as visible as you can, but with, but with purpose. So for me, that's identifying and attacking the low hanging fruits and making sure that I'm communicating positive news out as well as being available for the, you know, the escalations and everything like that. Um, as I've said, make, maintaining communication via, by, by the, the calls and via your teams. And that is to me, that's internal as well as, you know, inward facing to IT as well as outward facing. Um, try not to do everything by email. Every single thing is now done on email. Um, as you're all aware, you know, that, what, that question that someone would shout over the office is now emailed. Um, everything is. So for me, as much as email is, you know, you need to make sure that some of it's communicated by email. It's very much around getting in team meetings, um, get joining town halls and giving your updates that as verbally as you can. Um, and then, yeah, it's okay to not be okay. Um, I'm going to admit I had a couple of days in the last seven months where it just wasn't going to be a positive move for me to join that call that morning for whatever reason. And I just didn't. And, um, you know, I'm in a very supportive company and I've got a very supportive boss and we all talk about mental health all the time. And they're, you know, they constantly say it's okay to not be okay and to own it. So it's much better to have a few hours off one afternoon um, to get yourself into a good head, head space than to ignore it and like four weeks later have a, a complete breakdown, which easily happens. And um, particularly when you don't have anyone to bounce off if you live alone. So. So yeah, I think that's the, the, the five points in summary, really. Yeah, absolutely. And th thank you very much for that, Lisa. Um, I, I feel like those five points are really, really the main things to take away um, from this. But but just a question for, from myself, really, to, to start the whole Q&A. Um, you, you know, if there was one thing that you could advise people, Lisa, um, to take away from this session, what, what would that what would that be? What would your, your main tip uh, for those who have joined maybe a bit later? Um, what would it be? Um, how are you going to make me pick one now? <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, um, I think for me, it's, it was very much, um, I think when you're, when you're sitting on your own and you have no, you have limited feedback coming back to you. I mean, I speak to my boss once a fortnight, half an hour. Um, Obviously, you know, it, lots is being done through emails, even on WebExes, sometimes people don't put their videos on, so you don't have any non-verbal feedback at all. And it can be quite easy to lose your confidence, particularly when you're new and you're not entirely sure, you know, you're feeling a bit anxious and, you know, you're not quite sure if you're doing the right thing. So it's about just backing yourself. Um, and if you don't, if you're not sure, actually asking for that feedback. So, you know, I actually said to my boss a few times, am I on the right path here? Am I doing the right thing? Um, just to make sure, you know, just to keep that confidence going, to keep carrying on down the same pathway. So I think that would be another tip as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I'd echo that as well. Even in um, in my work, uh, I think when you're working remotely, it's very um, important that you have those sorts of regular catch ups, maybe, you know, your daily one to one or if your um, manager or director doesn't have the time at least once a week, um, because it's so crucial where you're not there and they're not able to see what you're doing or see your ability um, or, or see where your mistakes are. Um, it, it, the very least you could do is ask them how you are doing or how it, you, you think um, how they think you're doing uh, but because it's important to, to keep track of your, your work and the quality of your work and obviously when you're working remotely it's very hard to do that so it's good to have that kind of catch up with your with your manager or director definitely yeah and I think you know when, you, when you're in those first few months and it is a bit you know you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and you will be on some days and you're not sure if you're going in the right direction I think just just go back and find your confidence and keep going forward um, because to be fair if you do anything wrong, you probably will get told, let's face it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where IT is always to blame. Um, yeah. so if you're unhappy, they're probably going to tell you. But yeah, I think it's just when you're having those days where it's a bit, you're feeling a bit um, uh, insecure. It's just to, just to remind yourself that you're doing the right thing and just to keep moving forward. Sure, definitely. So we've got a couple of uh, of questions in the chat, and uh, guys, do feel free to, um, to to ping a few questions in the chat as well, or or just take yourself uh, off mute. You know that that's perfectly fine. Um, we we go with the first question from from Jack. Um, so he says, uh, "Hi, Lisa. Uh, without meeting members of the IT team in person, would you say you have still managed to build trusted relationships and allies?" Um, yeah. What 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 are your thoughts yeah, on that? Definitely. Um... So uh, I have weekly meetings with my direct team members, one-to-one. -one. We obviously have a team meeting, um, but that's always very sort of, you know, it's quite technical and very focused on actions. But I actually set up weekly and, well, I mean, most cases weekly and sometimes fortnightly, depending if, if people pushed back on that frequency a lot, um, with, my, with my direct team, so my peers. Um, and by doing that, um, it's actually enabled me to speak to them enough that we can have what I call the chit chat at the beginning of the call. Um, so, you know, I know if they've got kids, I know where they live. Um, and it's all of that stuff around the edges that helps you build relationships with people and build trust. Um, I think um, being, you know, the point I made around being effective um, with the business builds just as much trust internally as it does with you know with your internal IT team as it does externally because um, it proves that you know you can actually focus on things that are going to be have an impact to the business and that they're you know if all the guys are working on the right things um, and obviously another part of my role is to implement processes which makes the IT team's lives easier um, and, and make us more effective effective in delivering change outwards so you know I'm working with them a lot on things that actually make their lives easier not harder so I think yeah at the moment I think I've uh, built quite good relationships by doing that and um, so far I'm getting pretty positive feedback on the things that we're focusing on and I do I ask the questions a lot I do ask people a lot am I doing the right thing is there something I'm not doing that you want me to um, and that's the easiest way to find out if you if you if you built that trust or not to be honest mm. Uh, absolutely and and lisa um so, so jag she actually has another question as well so um she's asked if, if you feel like you have a true sense of the company and culture and the key challenges they face and uh, i'll let you answer first and then i'll i'll put, have my input as well because i've actually uh, been for a remote onboarding process as well um so so over to you lisa um so what was the first part of that? The so, yeah, so it's, uh, do you have a true sense of the company culture and key challenges they face? Do you feel like you do? Um, definitely the challenges is they, that they're facing, yes, 100%. <laughs> um, there is no doubt about that, that I've got across that. The company culture, that's an interesting one. A true sense, probably no. Um, some sense, um, because of the interactions that you see, you know, I have, you know, 550 odd people in my business that I interact with so well not every day thank good thankfully but you get you do you get a, a reasonable amount of um understanding the culture just from how people communicate with you um but yeah no obviously I don't have a complete sense yet it's been 
not that long in the scheme of things. I mean, there's people in MSM that have worked there for 30 years. Um, so I would, well, even if I was walking around at the office, I wouldn't necessarily claim to have a complete feel for the culture yet. But, um, but yeah, I, I think I do have an, an indication, to be honest. But yeah, it's a bit of, but definitely in terms of the challenges of the business, 100%, I'm across that. To ask the question as well at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, sure. And and yeah, I think in terms of, of culture, right, it, it's very hard because you're never going to get that true, um, you're, you're never going to get that true sense, right? It, it's it's very hard and it's it's very difficult to assess that without actually ever being with anyone. But um, I think you'll you'll really know if your company are true to, to what they, they make out to be just through the interactions you have, just through the reality. If they're trying to keep, um, so say if they have a collaborative culture, that, that's what they paint the picture of and, and they have a, a a culture of caring uh, and all of this stuff um i think if they're not you know keeping in contact with you if they're not having those daily checkups on you or they're not trying to assess um you know how you're doing or, or, or just regular communication i think that's when you get an indication as to whether the culture is bad or not but if your company is is interacting with you and and uh, checking up on you etc i think you get a very good idea um jag to answer your question uh, about the culture i think that's when you're even the way you'd, you'd get an answer be it, be it good or bad um so i do think you do get a sense of the culture but not a hundred percent as you would face to face like uh, lisa was saying throughout the event you know there are just some things that you you know this isn't a hundred percent guide of how to completely debunk the myth there are definitely some things that remain true like face-to-face -face communication is better but it's all about adapting so um yeah jag that's that one and then um there, there was one one last question from jag as well so she asked um have your brm processes um and governance had to change for example assessing demand online rather than in person um Mm. So I'm going to be honest, in some cases there was just, uh, we've had a, a lot of gaps in processes and one of the sort of bonuses for me I suppose is that, um, and the role, you know, I was very much sold the role on the basis that there was a lot to fix, um, which is one of the reasons I took it. So in some cases I've had to put processes in where there hasn't been processes. Um, Obviously, I think one of the biggest challenges we've faced is, is missing those sessions where everyone used to get in a room and just draw on a whiteboard. That is really difficult to do um, on a WebEx. But to be honest, if you're asking me, off, when you say offline, I suppose you're asking me, do we, do we go out and say get estimates, for example, outside of a meeting? No, we don't. We have WebEx meetings. So if we had a, if any meeting that we would have had in the office space, we have via WebEx um, so that we make sure we have that good collaboration still. Um, it's not as easy when you don't have whiteboards to scribble on and walls and, you know, that sort of more, it's particularly for strategic sessions where you want to bounce ideas around. It's not quite as natural, but we have, um, we have WebExes and we make sure everyone's videos are on as much as possible as well which is not everyone's favourite thing to do at 9am, but, yeah. <laughs> um, but it does help to get that feedback in those particular types of sessions. But yeah, you have to vary, I think, depending on what you're after. But no, I think no, we, haven't, no, we haven't dropped any, any processes and anything that was driven through conversation and collaboration is still done that way, if that answers that question. Awesome. But yeah, Jag, I, I hope that, that helped answer that for you. Um, you know, if you need any any clearing up on it, just pop a message in the chat. Um, but but uh, Lisa, so Leighton um, has asked, um, you know, he, he's interested in the ratio of engagement between the business and IT in this role and how it's changed post the 60 days, post your initial 60 days. Um, yeah, so I suppose, you know what, so the first three weeks, I literally focused on meeting the IT guys and the IT team and really getting a clear understanding of how IT was set up in, in this company. Um, uh, apart from maybe one or two very key stakeholders, and to be honest, mate, one of them had interviewed me anyway, I, only, I reached out to a couple who it was sort of, you know, obligatory for me to reach out and say, hi, I've joined the business because they were expecting me. But for the first three weeks, I really, really focused on meeting everyone in IT that I needed to. And then I really went sort of super into meeting the business uh, for the next sort of six weeks, that, that sort of first two month period. 
um, because what I didn't want to do was go and meet the business people because I knew my I knew my tactic would be to go and ask for that IT feedback. So I really wanted to make sure that I understood how we were structured so that the feedback made sense. That makes sense if that makes sense. Um, and then after that, um, obviously, so I'm you know I'm part of the leadership team. So my peers are sort of the head of DevOps and the head of infrastructure and and, and, and at that level. Um, I suppose I'm probably in co probably contacting, I'm probably in contact with business 70% tech 30%. Um, but obviously it depends week to week and it just depends what I'm working on and, and um, what needs to be done. But more often, you know, if, if things need to be done on the IT side, they tend generally, I tend to sort of pass them over and they get cascaded downwards. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it did change every week, but yeah, the, in the first 60 days, there was a big focus on IT, then go to the business, really, really focus a lot of time on them. And then, yeah, it's more balanced as, as, as that's. Continued. Sure. Okay. F thanks. Uh, thanks, Lisa. And yeah, Leighton, that's a, a really good question. So um, to, to answer that, I think, uh, as Lisa was saying, you know, I'd probably say like 80 or 90% first three weeks for, for IT, and then it flipped. And then post then, it's just a case of as and when you, you need to spend time with people. Yeah. But it's, it's a really good um, a good uh, strategy, Lisa. I like the, the fact that you try and understand IT first because else you're kind of, yeah, you know, <laughs> just uh, it's working yeah, in thin air, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 IT is generally the same in most in most areas. You're going to have an infrastructure team, you're going to have a dev team. You know, that that's fairly, fairly standard across most companies, but um, understanding how they operate um what they control what what is uh, maybe looked after by third parties and all of that stuff means that you can have a bit more meaningful meaningful conversations in those initial conversations with your business yeah awesome no th thanks for that, um lisa so uh yeah will uh, th thanks for asking the question so um will's just asking now lisa and um, he said hi lisa uh, did you find any stakeholders resistant to initial online slash virtual contact um uh, and he says and did you uh secure facetime with them so so he also added i guess people can uh, can feel obliged to have conversations when you're standing in front of them yeah. <laughs> which is a very good point will <laughs> very good point uh, okay, so the way, so not, not really actually, so the way I approached it actually, so obviously the IT team, they knew I was coming and I would put into the CIO, so she, you know, I don't, I don't think anyone was going to be too, uh, too rude <laughs> hopefully when I very first joined and they were all very welcoming actually, so no, that was fine. From, uh, I suppose from more of a stakeholder perspective, um, the way I approached it actually, so my, I've got a dotted line into the CIO, CRO, and I actually asked him to email all of the people that I needed to meet and introduce me, um, who are more in the senior layers. So everybody sort of on the more senior side of the business, I actually asked the CRO who I met first and who interviewed me, um, if he would introduce me via an email so that when I approached them, they had context. And I think that also sort of... Um, made them feel obliged maybe to meet me because the CRO had told them about my existence. I don't know, but to be honest, there's not been anyone who I've had to really, you know, who I've tried to set up meetings with who's just declined them and declined them and declined them. They might've moved them out a little bit, but I've not actually had anyone who's completely blocked me. Um, and then my other approach is obviously to be, well now people might be a bit more avoidant because I might be coming up, you know, trying to, trying to contact them uh, for something less fun but uh, to be honest I just pick up the phone I know their phone numbers and I just ring them yeah if I need to but no I didn't really have any pushback I found it really welcoming actually I think it's one of the reasons I I say I really like I do like I really like my job and I really like working for MS Amlin because I was incredibly welcomed um there's a quite a few people that don't like having their video on and um, when I very first actually went on all my introductions when I set them all up I actually requested if people would put their video on because if I find it incredibly difficult to remember who people are if I can't connect their name to a visual, like a, you know, a face. Um, so that was a request from my perspective. Um, at first, I'm not so fast now because now I know that, you know, when the people I now know them fairly well, then they can just ring my phone and it doesn't make any difference. But definitely at the beginning, for me to even vaguely try and remember who anyone was, I needed to know what they looked like. <laughs> so that was another tip. But yeah, there's some people that don't like doing that. 
you, you mentioned there, Lisa, no one uh, yeah, was really declining and declining and declining on, on the video chat. You might want to uh, swap with me if you ever fancy a change of scenery and work in <laughs> recruitment for a bit. That's, uh, <laughs> you get the flip side of that, actually. It's yeah. quite lucky when people do want to speak to you. But uh, a lot of the people in this chat are all, are all in my good books, really. So <laughs> you're all safe, everyone. <laughs> but um, no, f thank you very much for that question, Will. It's a, a good one. And Leighton, very good question beforehand as well. And, and Jag, uh, a good series of question there. So um, yeah, thank you very much. Is there uh, anyone else who, who has any questions at all? Feel free to take yourself off mute or, or put it in the chat as, as the others have done. Um, Jag also said uh, thank you very much for, for uh, answering the questions and, and she said well done as well. It seems thank like you. you've done a very, very good job and, and yeah, I, I can echo that you definitely have done. Um, so can I can I ask a follow up um, to Lisa? Sorry, it's late, and uh, yeah, I'm, yes. I'm obliging and putting the camera on just so that uh, <laughs> a bit of context there, Lisa. Um, if, if I understand this role, uh, you you truly have sat as the business partner between the IT and the business, so you didn't have. Uh, but, but and please correct me if I'm wrong. Any accountability responsibility for for service or projects and and budgets? Do I read that correctly? I do have accountability for delivering the IT pieces of any projects. Yes, and making sure that we do that to budget. However, that's one of those objectives that requires me and about three other people to do that at the same time. Um, yeah. Um, it, you know, so there's me, there's the program manager, there's the head of change, for example. We all have that same objective. We all need to work together to achieve it. Um, with regards to delivery, service delivery, um, so we have business partners, which is my role, and we also have business relationship managers as well within MS Amlin, and they look after what I call more of the live, the run stuff, um, and my focus in, is on the change and the strategic stuff, but I do have oversight for that as well. So. If things go wrong um, and they're more of an incident level, then I have to step in and, um, and take some ownership for that as well. But it's, it is one of those roles where I have a lot of objectives that relate to exactly those th things you've said, but I can, can't achieve them on my own. I need to collaborate with up to four or five people to get that done. So, so they do, it does sit under my, my objective banner, but they're not solely mine. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it does. And um, just listening to, to your description there, obviously um, the the size of the team in MS Hamlin is, you know, fairly substantial sort of around that as well. If you had to uh, equate this, you know, the model that you've adopted in this uh, new role um, in your other business partner roles, would it, would, do you think it would have been the same sort of outcome? Um, in terms of how I approach it. Yeah, and how successful it sounds like you've been in that sort of yeah, first, to be fair. So as I've said, the first role in Australia, I literally had no idea what I was doing. So I just had to work it out <laughs> as I went along. Um, and I, it, it was quite a long time ago now. So it's a bit difficult for me, for me to even remember. But certainly, and I think actually, did I do exactly the same thing when I do, joined Direct Line? Probably not, actually. I think it did come from experience. And a little bit of just um, th this whole approach that I had around meeting everyone for half an hour and asking them their feedback was purely born out of the fact that I had to have 30 minute conversations with people to introduce myself over Webex. So have I, it, in terms of the approach that I've taken in lockdown, no, I've not used that specific approach before. In terms of how I generally do my job, yes, I re I've replicated that. Um, twice now and yeah I continue you know you, you I take my own feedback to be honest and if things work I make sure that that becomes part of my DNA and if they don't I lose it and I, or I look for some another way of doing things so I think it's about just that learning in you know, that feedback loop and making sure that you're cognizant enough to recognize what is working for you and what isn't and adapt to that and then you will continue you know in, in any job I think that applies um, to continually improve yourself yeah okay no thank you for that um because whilst i mean i started my new role and business partner uh, in september uh of um, last year so obviously a little bit before covid but uh, i've never met my sort of line manager in in person he's in uh, emia 
and uh, we but again following the principle that you've outlined we have a catch up you know generally at least once a week or uh, once a fortnight depending on how the diaries sort of fit in so okay no, thank you thank you very much for that Leighton um, so uh, Sarah um, has also asked will you go back to the office when it's possible okay. I know we <laughs> <laughs> so I live on my own and I'm quite a sociable creature as I said it's one of the reasons I like this job because I like people um so uh yeah I can't wait I mean yeah as much as you know if I can go to Italy and work from there with my laptop that would be my first pick <laughs> failing that yeah to get back to the office I'm I'm really looking forward to it um which obviously not, probably isn't going to happen realistically until about March um um re really uh in terms of the fact you know it's all well and good going back to the office but there's only other two, two other people in there and then i spend all day on webex anyway then i may as well be at home um but yeah once it gets back to like whatever the new normal is um i can't wait to get back to the office and yeah be amongst human beings <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's one of the disadvantages for me about being from home if you live alone if you wake up in a bad mood um usually going to the office and being amongst other people it snaps you out a bit you bounce off their energy you don't get that at home so you have to find other ways to snap yourself out of bad moods or you know mind fogs or whatever you want to call them um and it's way more challenging so i can't wait to get back to the office personally but i will be i also do like my days from home it will be a blended, a blended <laughs> thing but yeah yeah, it's, it's good to find that balance. And, and uh, Sarah, to give you some context as well. So Lisa's been been uh, working from home now since last. When was it, Lisa? October? Well, I, left, I left direct line in October. So mm. I had my four months off before I started this new job, nearly five, actually. And I did all of those clearing out of the cupboards and all of the other stuff that everyone else apparently did during lockdown. So uh, thank <laughs> If I hadn't got this new job, I would have really been bouncing off the walls, I think. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so I've had a, a, a year from home now. So, yeah. I don't know if that makes me an expert or on the edge. Of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, you had that, that premature uh, furlough just without getting paid, didn't you, Lisa? <laughs> so, uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah, of, co of course, you're, I, I bet that you're really excited to go back. It's, um, it's really yeah. nice. And I think moving forward, just, just on that point, Sarah, as well, um, the, the mix between home working and uh, it, being in the office, I think, will, will be the norm as well. Now, I think that's going to be quite crucial and there definitely will be splits. Us personally, expertise, we have... Um, four days in the office and, and one at home but now fully remote as of tomorrow um so it's a quite timely event in that sense but um but uh, yeah i think it, it's crucial to, to still maintain um that office contact as you well know yourself um sarah it's it, uh, it's good to have that mix of, of webex and and teams calls and of course still seeing people face to face definitely <laughs> sarah any any other questions from anyone at all Feel free to take yourself off mute or uh, or put it in the chat. Um, it, that, that's perfectly fine. Has so every, everything been um, answered? Yeah, oh, no, I have a question. Ange? It's Ange here. Hi. Hi, Ange. Hi, Lisa. Thank you. That's really informative. Um, I was just wondering what sort of tools have you found most useful? So when you're going, when you're meeting people, capturing that information and perhaps sharing it with your other business partners or heads of, or the, uh, you mentioned, you've also got business relationship managers. Um, so in a lot of companies that, that role does sort of both sort of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah so how, and when you do handoffs and things like that, I'm just wondering how smooth is it or, or have you had to work out most efficient way to do that um, i mean i collate i use i use good old excel to collate feedback to be honest and do pivot tables on it and all sorts of things like that um and then obviously you know you glamour it up a bit with powerpoint when presenting stuff i i i'm not heavy on 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 creating loads of content for my business in terms of it depends what you're referring to um obviously the change stuff is all produced by the, the program guys. So luckily I just have to pick that up and present it. When I'm talking to the business and I don't do town halls, you're lucky if you get one more than one slide out of me. Um, I don't like death by PowerPoint. I never have. 
And if you, I find people actually listen to you when they don't have anything to read. Um, so, uh, you know, a tip that that's always how I've worked. Um, I am, um, you know, you, if you, even if you catch me, catch me presenting for an hour, I probably have three or four slides max. Um, cause I think, you know, it goes in better when it's verbal than people just reading. And also there's no point in me being there if they're just going to read it and I can send it to them. Um, in terms of handoff. So, um, I have a very good relationship with my other business partners and my BRMs. We speak at least, if not twice a week. Um, so we're very across what each other are doing at all times, which means that if any, if any, either of us need any of us need to step out, it's a lot hard. It's a lot easier to for that handover to happen. Um, other than that, yeah, I don't, yeah, I'm not. I don't can't really think of any tools I use per se. Um, well, Excel is um, is what we were using before we started using Excel, um, and I think that worked quite well. Um, because this, it's not really worth investing in anything too fancy because then it became, becomes cumbersome to try and keep it updated all the time because things yeah. just go out of date within a day or two. Um, yeah, it depends really what you're focusing on. So, I mean, obviously in the, in the run space, we use ServiceNow. So, you know, from a, from a more specific detailed level, I've got that tool that I look at, um, but I operate at a bit more of a strategic level. So, yeah, you'll find me doing Excel and powerpoints if i have to <laughs> brilliant thank you yeah thank you Ange. A any other questions for, from anyone at all no nope. <laughs> waiting to rush down to the pub for the last time <laughs> yeah everyone's trying to get their last pint in or uh, yeah <laughs> last public pint <laughs> Does, um, is that uh, everything covered from everyone then? No, uh, no kind of last questions for, from anyone at all? Or comments? Was this useful? Was yeah. this not useful? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, all good. Sarah's got the clap in hand, so she, she must be uh, congratulating us on a, on a decent event. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but um, no, guys, for, for, from my side, um, that, that's pretty much everything. It's, uh, that's a wrap, really. Um, so, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Lisa, for, for doing that. You must have really helped the, uh, the attendees today, um, you know, moving forward, uh, especially with, with everything going on. Um, so, so that's really, uh, really helpful. Thank you so much for that. Um, yeah, you know, moving forward, uh, guys and girls, what I'd like to um, constantly do with, with this BBRM group, um, just while just while you're all here, and I'm sure I've uh, I've bored you to death with this over the phone already. But <laughs> what I'm trying to uh, trying to do here is um, run an event every month. Um, and kind of keep these things ongoing because I feel like uh, a lot of us, um, as we all know, you know, BRMs and, and business partners are quite underrepresented and not a lot of IT directors, heads of IT, CIOs, etc. Some of them, uh, believe it or not, aren't even aware of the function. Um, and that's first hand because I, I work with uh, those guys on the flip side of the coin. So what I'm trying to do here is really just to, to, to help the community ensure that we all kind of stick together and, and work together on, uh, on different events and uh, cover off different topics as well i think it's really good to to share ideas and and keep the brm stuff going definitely um so if you haven't already uh, on that note join the the bbrm group on on linkedin that's where you'll you'll probably see a write-up from from this event and all future articles and events will be on there um and the next event that i'm intending to run um, and i th think the, the facilitator um is potentially in the chat now so sarah and i um are going to be discussing the importance of BRMs and, and business partners in medium to large organisations next. And we've actually got a call uh, later on this week to, to try and uh, yeah to discuss the, the topic there. But do, do you guys who are in the um, in the chat now, do you feel as though that's a useful topic for everyone or quite an interesting one? Because it really shows the, uh, the value of everything um, within medium to large organisations. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. yeah, I would agree as well. Awesome. 
Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. That's uh, yeah. It's good to hear. Good to hear we're on the right track. Got the engagement. <laughs> is there just whilst we're here as well, everyone? Is there any sorts of uh, events or topics as a final point that you guys would like to see in the future? Anything that springs to mind? I'm sure we go over it on our calls individually. But um, just whilst we're here, has anyone had any kind of brainstorms or ideas about something they'd find useful to cover next? It's fine if not as well. I don't think that fast. <laughs> no, all good. I'll I'll, uh, I'll I'll get to work with that. <laughs> but, um, we'll have a think about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, but everyone, thank you so much for coming. Is there any kind of final questions or anything at all before we end this? No, all good. Okay. No, no questions. I would just like to say thank you to Lisa for um, sharing. It was really, uh, really useful. Glad it was useful. Thank you. Nice oh, thank to you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Leighton. Thank, thank yeah, you very thank, much. Thanks, Lisa. Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. And Nathan. Oh, no. no worries. Thank you so much, Sarah. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming. It's been a, been a really good event. Awesome. Thanks, you guys, thanks, Lisa. Enjoy the lockdown. <laughs> no worries, Mick. <laughs> yeah. Good night. Cheers, Ed. Take care. Yes. Bye bye. Bye. Night, everyone.